pay money and you can do whatever. What drives you to just keep? Yeah, it could be slipping my ties on right. on a tropical island. Uh, a robot and servant, I, like, or something. you know, windsurfing with naked models. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, some people do that. So like, what drives you to? I mean, obviously, you you so work and work. Wait a second. And, why? Why am I not? What? Why? <laughs> He even has a sense of humor. Why am I not doing that? And of course, these, all these guys at Babylon Bee are all Christian conservatives, and it's like naked models. You're not supposed to do that, Alon. <laughs> I just realized. Yeah. What Question the, everything. I've, I've, I've been wrong all this time. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I working 90 hours a week? This is crazy. Because I'm always fascinated by the idea of, like, I've made it. People always want to say, be able to say, I've made it. I've arrived. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, like, how do you... You know, you, you hit those little islands in your life, and you actually have to break yourself of that mindset. And what are ways that you break yourself of that mindset and keep on going? Uh, I didn't put all this effort into building SpaceX and, and uh, Tesla because I thought they were easy ways to make money. Um, I mean, anyone who starts a car company thinking it's an easy way to make money is a fool. <laughs> Absolutely right. Um, there are only two car companies that have not gone bankrupt in the history of the United States, and that's Ford and Tesla. And Tesla came... Um, within I inches of going bankrupt multiple times, as did SpaceX. So, right, and like who starts a rocket company think it's going to be successful? Um, I, I saw it, I mean, I, the, both, both those companies I, I thought had less than a 10% chance of success. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, it's pretty amazing. The idea that you start a company, and, and as you'll hear, he put all this money that he made on, on um, PayPal into these companies, so all his wealth was tied up in them, with a 10% with chance of success. I mean, that takes a lot of self-esteem. It takes a lot of courage. Uh, it takes vision. It, it takes a certain joy in, in, in just shooting for the moon. Well, he is shooting for the moon. I mean, really, just going for it and going big, not going small, going big. Who does that? Who goes big? Everybody today is such a wimp and careful and worried and uh, overly thoughtful. And, you know, why don't you just not go for it? And, and these are two companies that, yeah, auto companies go bankrupt. That's what auto companies do. <laughs> and rocket companies? Where does that come from? So just that. Wow. Isn't it fun? To be alive when they are, there's a businessman like this who's going for it, full on going for it. That's truly the American spirit and the American sense of life. And I thought it was overwhelmingly likely that I would lose the money that I made from PayPal. You know, I came to North America when I was 17, just by myself. Um, and I had like a, like a, a few thousand dollars in in. Traveler's checks, back when traveler's checks were a thing, you know, um, in Canadian dollars. Uh, I, land, <laughs> I land, landed in Montreal. Um, I have some family in Canada. Uh, and my mom's uncle lived in Montreal. But like, we didn't, we didn't even know his phone number. So I, I land in Montreal, and my mom says, oh, I just got a letter back from my uncle. And he's in Minnesota or something. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, OK, I don't know what to do now. So I just stayed in a youth hostel and like, bought a bus ticket across Canada. And I worked in various like, odd jobs and stuff. Worked on my on my mom's cousin's farm, wheat farm in Saskatchewan for six weeks. <laughs> That's where I had my 18th birthday, actually. You know, worked in the lumber mill, uh, chainsawed logs, and did, did various odd jobs, um, and uh, and then went to college in, in Canada for a couple of years. I paid my own way through college, by the way. So, but in Canada, it's like easier because the college is more subsidized, um, and I was a Canadian citizen through my mom. So, and I got some scholarships and loans and stuff. And, and then um, I applied to the University of Pennsylvania. And I uh, didn't think I'd be able to go because um, tuition is really high. But they, they gave me a scholarship and loans and stuff. So I was able to go there. Um, I graduated with like, about $100,000 in student debt. And um, I was going to do grad studies at, at Stanford and decided to put that on hold uh, to try starting an internet company. Um, I actually, I tried to get a job at Netscape, um, but they didn't, <laughs> I'd send my resume and didn't get a response. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I guess I, sh I can't get a job. 
groups. Job at, at the, there are only a few internet companies and that can get a job at any of them. So I was like, I guess I want to do some of the internet. I got to start my own company. Uh, and, but I ended up writing the first uh, maps and directions on the internet. I wrote it personally. Uh, maps, directions, yellow pages, white pages, uh, on a puny computer, like with hardly any. Com so it had, you had to be like the code had to be super tight. Um, I even have some patents on like. Maps and directions and yellow pages and white pages and stuff uh, from from ages ago. They're they're lapsed now, but th that that company ended up getting bought by by Compaq for about three hundred million dollars. I own seven percent of the company, so I got like twenty million dollars from that. Put most of it into uh, X.com, which merged with Confinity to create PayPal, and then I got about one hundred eighty million dollars from that, and I put all of that into Sp SpaceX, Tesla, and, and Solar City. Uh, I just basically kept, you know, kept all the chips on the table and just like, let's play another round. I and mean, most people take the chips off the table or, or at least some of their chips. And, and, uh, and then SpaceX and Tesla ended up being valuable and that's where I am. But, but the, the, the reason for SpaceX and Tesla so, uh, is... Whoops, 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 whoops. All right, so uh, there's, a, there's a rundown of his career. I thought that was a quick rundown. That was nice. Uh, the guy is a serial entrepreneur. He's done this more than once. He started a software company basically in grad school, sold it for $300 million, I think he said, and he owned 7%, he got $20 million. And then, of course, he's one of the founders, ultimately, of what became PayPal, uh, x.com that became PayPal. Uh, that is quite a resume. <laughs> That's impressive. And somebody says, ooh, he's got the Canadian spirit. Well. The amazing thing is, and this is, I think, um, I don't think you Americans like to hear this, but the fact is that the people who have the most American spirit are immigrants. In this case, he, uh, he, he, was, uh, he grew up in South Africa, uh, where I have family roots too. He grew up in South Africa, moved to Canada, and then to the United States. And as an immigrant, these are the kind of people you guys want to build walls, want to keep out. Um, He changed the world. But it's often immigrants who have that American spirit, that spirit of we can do anything, that spirit of nobody's going to stand in my way, that Howard Walk spirit, if you will, of I am going to make it, even if I have to work in a quarry for a while. And I think Elon Musk has exhibited that uh, throughout his career, he just goes out there and does it. He makes it happen. He's obviously brilliant. He's obviously super smart. But part of it is that he makes it, that he is ambitious. He's willing to work super, super hard. Super, super hard. And he doesn't believe we need to go to Mars because the world is ending because of climate change or something like that. He'll... He, he, you know, he doesn't believe that at all. We'll, we'll see that in a minute. All right, let's switch gears and let's talk about Elon's kind of how he thinks about solving problems. His, you know, to some extent, his epistemology. So uh, let's look at this. This is from uh, Lex Friedman show. And... Um, I think I think this is an interesting segment. Uh, see what you think. Uh, see what you think of this. Uh, you know, Lex has always asks super thoughtful questions, and um, Elon has these pretty amazing answers. What's the pause before he answers? What's your source of belief in situations like this, when the engineering problem is so difficult? There's a lot of experts many of whom you admire who have failed in the past. Yes. And um, a lot of people, you know, the, a lot of experts, maybe journalists, all the kind of, you know, the public in general have a lot of doubt about whether it's possible. And you yourself know that uh, even if it's a non-null set, non-empty set of success, it's still unlikely or very difficult. Like, where do you go to both personally um, intellectually as an engineer, as a team, like for source of strength needed to sort of persevere through this. So now the question is about belief, about source of strength. And you'll see in a minute, 
Elon doesn't know exactly how to answer this question because he doesn't think in those terms. And that I find super interesting. And to add, keep going with the project, take it to completion. Listen to pause. He's thinking. That's rare. A source of strength. Hmm. I, I just really not how I think about things. Um, I mean, for me, it's simply this, this is something that is important to get done. Um, and we, we should just keep doing it um, or die trying. And I, I don't need a source of strength. So quitting is not even like... Um... That's not, it's not in my nature. Okay. And I, I don't care about optimism or pessimism. Fuck that, we're going to get it done. Get... Now that's the American spirit. After that, we're going to get it done. We just are. We're going to figure out a way, and we're going to get it done. That's the kind of attitude that, you know, America's always represented. And I can't think of anybody right now out there who represented more than Elon Musk. And it's like social belief, social strength. No, it's just... I just get it done. We just get it done. I tell the, the team, we just need to get it done. Figure it out. Get it done. <laughs> Can you uh, then zoom back in to specific problems with Starship or any engineering problems you work on? Can you try to introspect your particular biological neural network, your thinking process, and describe how you think through problems, through different engineering and design problems? Is there like a systematic process? You've spoken about first principles thinking, but yeah, is there a kind of absolutely. process to it? Well, um, you know, like saying like, like physics is a law and everything else is a recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, like I've met a lot of people who can break the law, but I haven't met anyone who could break physics. <laughs> so that's great. You start with fact. You start with reality. You start with what the laws of physics are if you're an engineer. Right? That you cannot change, but that's kind of the first principles. <laughs> so, uh, so the first, for you know, any kind of technology problem, you have to sort of just make sure you're not violating physics. Um, and, you know, uh, first principles analysis, I think, is something that can be applied to really any walk of life, uh, any, anything really. It's just, it's, it's really just saying, um, you know, let's, let's boil something down to the most fundamental, uh, principles, the things that we are most confident are true at a foundational level. And that sets your, at your, sets your axiomatic base. And then you reason up from there and then you cross check your conclusion against the, the axiomatic truths. Um, so, so he's missing. Uh, the observations and, and all of that, right? He's missing the concretes, the experience, and all that. But this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Um, if only you know, some did basics this. in physics would be like, are you violating conservation of energy or momentum or something like that? You know, then you, you're, it's not going to work. <laughs> um, so uh, that's, the, you know, so that's just to establish, is, is, it, is it possible... And then another good physics tool is thinking about things in the limit. If you if you take a particular thing and you uh, scale it to a very large number or to a very small number, how does how do things change? Um, Both like temper like in number of things you manufacture. Yeah, I mean, I I, I wanted you to get that piece on um, first principles and how he thinks about problems, how it starts with reality. Physics represents reality, really. And you always test against reality. You always confirm against reality. Um, I mean, he's a real thinker. And you get a sense that he's a thinker from the way he answers questions. All right, finally, uh, I, I want to show this clip um, at the end of Joe Rogan's show. I, I, I think it represents a, a, a bit about, you know, what motivates him around, particularly around uh, SpaceX, um, you know, you get a little bit of an idea of his motivation. Um, I think, I think he's, uh, you know, he's, a, he looks a little, maybe this is the episode where he 
smoke pot with Joe Rogan. I don't know. Because he looks a little off. Uh, so ignore that. Listen to what he actually says. Uh, a lot of folks. Yeah. I mean, but like, uh, you know, my goal is like try to do useful things. Try to maximize the probability the future is good. Um, try to do useful things and try to maximize the probability that the future is good. Um, that's not bad. Yuan's rules for life, they kind of fit in there. It doesn't contradict them. Could, could be more fleshed out. Make the future exciting. Make the future Bring exciting. Up. There's another one. I love that. Look forward to, you know. Make it so you look forward to you know, another one. With, uh, you know, with Tesla, we're like trying to make things that people love. You know, it's like not. That sounds a little bit like Apple. Try to make things that people love. Um, and, you know, that. It's just, a, it's just, he has this vision of, uh, I want to make amazing, exciting, thrilling things that will make the future better. I mean, wow, that's a great vision for an entrepreneur. Think like, how many how many things can you buy that you really love that really give you joy? So rare, so rare. I wish there were more things. That's what we're trying to do: just make things that somebody loves. Make things that somebody loves. Uh, you could phrase it in a different way. You could talk about the fact that what business does is it creates values, values for people. Why are these things values for people? Because it's stuff that people love, it's stuff that people love to consume, to use, to drive. Here's my iPhone, stuff that people love to use. This is something I love to use. That's, it's a beautiful thing. And it's, I think, what ultimately inspires every great entrepreneur. The creation of value. The creation of value. Making the world better by creating value and doing it by challenging yourself. When you, when you think about so making difficult. things that someone loves, like, do you specifically think about like, what things would improve people's experience? Like, what, what would change the way people interface with life that would make them more relaxed or more happy? You really think, like, when you're thinking about things like that, is that, like, one of your considerations? Like, what, what could I do that would help people? So this is a funny thing. It's like Joe Rogan wants something that helps people. But when he goes to help people, he goes to meditation. He goes to relax. He goes to these superficial things. And Elon is all about creating real values, exciting stuff, building stuff, making stuff. None of this touchy-feely, oozy, or altruistic stuff. Now, Elon wants to help people. They help people by creating great values for them. That yeah. maybe they wouldn't be able to figure out. Yeah, like, like what are the set of things that can be done to make the future better? Make the like, future better is much better than you know, help people. Like, so I think that a future where we are a space-faring civilization and out there among the stars, this is very exciting. I agree, and I love that. It's super exciting. If the human race is out there in the stars, it's super exciting. If Star Trek or whatever come and become real, if, if all the sci-fi stuff that we read is real, that would be truly super exciting. It's not about planet Earth decaying or, you know, it, it's about how ambitious we're going to be any more than Christopher Columbus didn't set sail to, to, to find, you know, to explore new lands because he was worried about the decay of Europe, but because he was an explorer. He wanted to discover new lands. He, wa he was ambitious. This makes me look forward to the future. This makes me want that future. Looking forward to the future, wanting that future. All positive you know, things. The things there need to be things that make you look forward to waking up in the morning. You wake up in the morning, you look forward to the day, 
forward to the future. In a future where we are a space-faring civilization and out there among the stars, I think that's very exciting. That is a thing we want. I agree. Whereas if, if you knew we would not be a space-faring civilization but forever confined to Earth, this would not be a good future. That would be very sad, I think. I agree. It would be we sad don't want the sad future. Of the, the, just the, the finite lifespan yeah. of the Earth itself and the solar system itself? No, no, no. That even though it's possibly, you know, I mean, how many, wh how long do they feel like this Roman sun lacks and the solar system imagination, really exist? lacks imagination. How many hundreds he of millions of years? doesn't get Elon Musk at all. Well, it's probably, if you're saying, the, when does the sun boil the oceans? Right. About 500 million years. So is, is it sad that we never leave because in 500 million years that happens? Is that what you're saying? No, I just think, like, there, if there are two futurists, and one futurist, we're out there among the stars, and the things we read about and see in science fiction movies, the good ones, are yeah. true. Yeah, We have these starships, and we're, we, we're going to see what other planets are like. And we're a multi-planet species, and the scope and scale of consciousness is expanded. Yep across many civilizations and many planets and many star systems, this is a great future. This is a wonderful thing to me, and that's what we should strive for. Mm. But th that's biological travel. That's cells traveling physically to another location. This is Rogan getting to be all this uh, mushy stuff, right? Yes. Do you think that's definitely where we're going? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. I used to think so, and now I'm thinking more likely less than ever. Like, almost every day, less likely. We can definitely go to the moon and Mars. Yeah. And Do we you think, think we can we'll go colonize? to the asteroid belt, and we can go to the moons of Jupiter, Saturn. We can even get to Pluto. That would be the craziest place ever if we colonized Mars and re-terraformed it and turned it into, like, a big Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> That's where his head is. <laughs> Just I think we should. And I think that'd, that'd be, be I mean, imagine. Great. There is, that'd be great. It's potent. There's it's possible, amazing. right? We yes. could turn the whole thing into Cancun. <laughs> well, I mean, over time, it wouldn't be easy, but yes, right. It's you could just warm, you could warm it up. Yeah, you warm could warm it up. it up. You could add air. You could get some water there. I mean, over time, we hundreds be, of millions of years or whatever it takes. We could be a multi-planet species. Yeah. That would be amazing. We'd be a multi-planet species. That's what we want to be. Legitimately, like air conditioned. Saturn. I'm pro-human. Yeah, that's the. I wanted to get to that. I'm pro-human. Right? Why is he saying all this? Why does he want all this? Because he's pro-human. And if you watch, if you watch these, uh, you know, I, I, there's a, you know, you could watch a lot more. There's a ton of stuff. There's there's a bunch of stuff. But even when he's talking about climate change, his argument is not the world is going to end in eight years. He's no Greta. His argument is, ultimately, this will probably warm the planet, and this is going to cause problems. Um, he, he's also gonna, he also says, uh, oil is finite. It might take a long time, but it is finite. We're going to have alternative energies at some point. Why not accelerate it? Why not reduce the risk? Now, I think a lot of that is rationalization. I, I think he's wrong about climate change. I think he's wrong about the urgency. I think he's wrong in much of what he's advocated. Somebody said... He blocked uh, Alex Epstein. Uh, I'm not surprised. I think he takes the wrong view on climate change. But he's not taking it because he hates human beings. He's not taking it because he hates life. He's not taking it. He's, he's mistaken. For whatever reason, he's mistaken. And his... His motivation seems to be that he wants to promote human life. He wants to make life better. He wants people to have a better life. And if you're worried about climate change long term, and he always emphasizes long term, not tomorrow, then he's for finding alternative sources of energy. I don't know what he thinks about government subsidies and government, all of that. He has said, I think you all saw, I think I showed the video of him saying he doesn't believe in subsidies, government should subsidize, he doesn't need subsidies. He has said that. Um, whether he's been consistent about that, I don't know, but he has said it. 
and I wish, I hope he is very consistent about it. But I, I, I just, at this point, I like him. I like his attitude. I like his sense of life. I like the spirit. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.